Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and today we destroy the famously popular first gear Katmandu. So am I ready for adventure or what? I've spent my $500-ish for a do-it-all touring jacket. I look like Ewan McGregor, and according to First Gear, I'm now ready to ride to the capital of Nepal. But for most adventure riders, the splash zone of a local water park is a more relevant scenario than a Himalayan rainstorm. And so we're going to test this jacket's waterproofing when Shamu does a belly flop in a minute. Now this jacket, the Katmandu, has a hypertex membrane, aka poor man's Gore-Tex, but I trust it, so much so that the essential ADV selfie device is going to be staying with me. Also, the under the helmet rain hood, aka Operation Dickhead, might as well go up. Hit it, Shamu! So, I stayed totally dry, no surprises there. I kind of knew from experience that Hypertex is very waterproof. It's only in terms of breathability that it's much worse than Gore-Tex. That's why I had no qualms about putting my phone on the line, which is still working fine. Um, the pocket I put it in actually has a waterproof zipper underneath the waterproof flap. It's amazing attention to detail in terms of waterproofing. Well done, first gear. Now for what it's worth, I actually left one of the chest vents open to see how the waterproofing would work, leaving a vent open. I actually didn't leak through there at all anyway, so. Good job, that's a pass. But what if I ride my adventure bike to a war zone? That's a question we receive literally never, but this is Rambo's Corner, so we're gonna test it anyway. 500 feet per second with a BB, a lead pellet, and a penetrating pellet. That's the equivalent of hitting a sharp rock while cruising along at 550 kilometers an hour, a situation we're all very familiar with. The jacket has to stop two or better to pass. Yeah, that one went through. <laughs> So this is the BB, this is the lead pellet, and then this is the penetrating pellet on the bottom. It looks like all of them actually punctured the first layer, but let's see how far they got through. So the BB was stopped, but these two, can you see that there? Our lead pellet and our penetrating pellet both came right through and, uh, and hit Brian F9 here. And if you look here, you can actually see the two indents on Brian. This from the, the pointed pellet uh, the lead one, and then this one from the penetrating pellet. No mark from the BB, so the BB was stopped outright. There's just the one mark um, where the penetrating pellet actually contacted Brian F9 right in the tummy. So the Katmandu stopped only one of our three shots. Two pellets made it right the way through to Brian F9. Sorry, dude, that is going to be a failing grade for puncture strength. Next, we're testing all of the armor protection, which means we're heading over to the batting cage. The Katmandu has an Eva foam back pad, but it has D3O in the elbows and shoulders. This is a viscoelastic stuff that's soft and pliable against the body, but turns rigid when, say, a baseball bat hits it. So that swing hurt my shoulder. I don't know about his. We'll uh, go in here and take a look. Uh, yeah, so we tripped the 100G sticker. Brian F9 probably has a broken shoulder. I'm not that surprised since it's only the CE level 1 D3O in there, but that certainly doesn't bode well for the chest test coming up next because first gear, Katmandu has absolutely no chest armor at all. I don't think this is gonna turn out well for you, Brian. Yep, broken ribs, punctured lung, no surprises there. Now spine protection is actually interesting. The Katmandu has a really flimsy Evo foam back pad. I would never expect that to pass, but they've also included a hydration bladder with this jacket, which you don't see very often. So I think they've actually earned the right to have this filled up. I'm not sure how much the water will do for impact protection though. So we are definitely leaking from the hydration bladder. I think we busted it when we hit it with the, uh, with the baseball bat. The question now though, is was it enough to save Brian F9's back? It was, that is amazing. So the 100G sticker is not tripped. You live to fight another day, buddy. So the hydration bladder pretty much drained completely. It failed here right at the sealing mechanism, which is kind of what you'd expect. Uh, but this was enough to save Brian and F9's back. So I guess it did its job, kind of. Now for abrasion resistance, we have 300 and 420 denier ripstop nylon making up the outer shell of the Katmandu. I'd love to grind through the 300D stuff because this belt sander would go through it like tissue paper. But First Gear did put 420 denier on all of the major sliding zones, so it's only really fair to grind through those areas. We 
finally got through that bottom sort of uh, synthetic fabric, just barely, and we're starting to see our black t-shirt in underneath there. Uh, so that'll be, that's our full penetration there. That's the end of the abrasion test. But I mean, look at all the layers that we had to get through. It actually chewed through the 420 denier nylon, no problem at all, but it's this weird foamy stuff they have underneath that took us a hell of a long time to get through. Um, after that, it was pretty quick through this, through the little armor pocket, and then down to the t-shirt. All right, so it took a total of 35 grinding seconds to get through the Katmandu. That barely gets a pass in our books. Anything over 30 seconds tends to be of average, so by the skin of its teeth, we do get a passing grade for abrasion resistance. If you remember, we actually passed spine protection as well. Kind of strange, but because of that hydration bladder, it actually didn't trigger the 100G sticker. But we busted the 100Gs when it came to chest protection and shoulder protection, so we've got failing grades up there. Now, because Brian F9 doesn't have any arms, we have to head over to Golf Town to test elbow protection. A lot of adventure riders say to me, hey Ryan, I'm concerned that my jacket won't be good enough if I get attacked by Tiger Woods. And that's a very valid concern, so here we go. So pulling out my noodle arm here, nope, 100G sticker got triggered, just like we saw with the D3O in the shoulder armor. So it turns out that the Kathmandu is not a good jacket if your adventure includes playing Nikki Nikki Nine Doors on Tiger Woods. Who knew? It's off to the burn unit now. All right, how does reflective material burn? Not too well, actually. I'm gonna have a hard time getting through that. This waterproof pocket, so there's a lot harder to get through, actually, the, um, the 420 denier nylon. Takes a way longer time to get through. Yeah, the 300 stuff you get through a lot quicker. Oh, it's singeing shut. Look at this D3O pad here. How does D3O burn? Not very well as it would turn out. Eva foam back pad. Let's go right through the thermal liner to get to that. Here we go. Yeah, through the thermal liner. The thermal liner in here is not very thick, by the way. Not super warm. Eva foam though, that'll burn. Logo's made from that same reflective stuff, I think. Not, not easy to burn at all. Probably the hardest thing to light on fire actually has been these uh, elbow adjusters. Not a lot of easy way to get through there. Nope, nothing at all. There we go, lovely. See how we get through the foam here. There's sort of foam padding on top of the D3O. Yeah, foam is, foam is quite keen to burn there. Oh yeah. So after that very scientific sequence of events, we've concluded that the Kathmandu was fairly easy to light on fire, not the best heat resistance. It's pretty much the case with every textile jacket we've tested. Kathmandu is probably not going to be the perfect choice if your adventure includes, say, a long quest to throw a ring into the fiery depths of a volcano. Frodo would probably be f***ed in the Kathmandu. Fortnite's ninth test is, as always, build quality, where we ask the rather ominous question, what still works on here? Uh, we burned this adjustment strap directly, but it still does its job. No sleeve to adjust, but there you have it. And then if you look up here, YKK zippers are notoriously sturdy. The zipper doesn't even go anywhere anymore, but it actually opens. Um, so that's pretty impressive. The under the helmet rain hood, which makes me look like a total dickhead, I'm sad to say, it's still in perfect shape. Uh, this wasn't burned at all. If we come in here, it's a bit fused. The D3O pad that we burned, though, looks pretty much brand new. That was actually really hard to light on fire. Um, let's come over on this side. Open this up. Let's see, this pocket. Yeah, didn't get through much there. Uh, more or less still looks like a pocket. Um, what else? Reflective material, we burned that. Let's see. Adjuster on the cuff there, that still looks good. Come over on the back and our hydration bladder. Yeah, still more or less, it separates from the thing. It's, it's attached down here and at the three points up top. We busted the bladder of course with the, uh, with the baseball bat, but, but that still works. Overall, pretty good for gear. A lot of the things that we um, had lit on fire, yeah, still performing the way they should. Sit rep, we saw a total of five failures today. Puncture strength, shoulder protection, chest protection, elbow protection, and heat resistance. That gives us an overall score 
of four out of nine, which is gonna be 44.444 repeated percent because we never get a nice round number here at Fort Nine crash tests. Unless, of course, something actually scores nine out of nine. Next week, we are testing a very popular Icon Supersport helmet, so who knows, maybe we'll get our first perfect score. Until then, take care.